Hello, my name is Steven with Micasense. Today I will give an overview of the Micasense Altum with DJI Skyport and explain how to prepare for your first flight. This particular Altum has the DJI Skyport, which is a permanently attached mount that can be used with Skyport enabled DJI drones, such as the Matrice 200 series and the Matrice 300. The Skyport's main advantage is that it allows the drone to talk to the camera, meaning that the drone could send trigger commands directly to the camera. This tight integration will simplify your workflow when flying DJI drones. This version of the Altum can still be mounted on other DJI drones, such as the Inspire 2, that have the same gimbal connector, but the drone won't be able to trigger the camera directly, and you will need to use another option, such as Micasense automatic triggering options, like overlap mode or timer mode. Looking at the side of the camera, you can see a USB 3 port where you can connect the USB storage device included with your Altum. The top of the camera has another USB port to plug in the included Wi-Fi dongle, which allows you to remotely connect to the camera's web interface. The top of the camera also has a button and LED status light. The button is used to safely power down the camera and to manually take calibrated panel captures. Finally, let's take a look at the sensors on the front of the camera. The Altum has five high-resolution multispectral sensors, red, green, blue, red edge, and near-infrared. There is also a long-wave infrared or thermal band to measure surface temperatures. These six bands will trigger simultaneously using global shutters along your drone's flight path. At the end of your flight, you can take all the raw data stored on your USB storage device and process it in photogrammetry software such as Pix4D Mapper or Agisoft Metashape to create digital elevation models and orthomosaics that will let you view and analyze your area of interest. Now, let's take a look at how to mount the Altum on a drone and power it on. We can easily mount the camera using the twist lock mechanism on the Skyport. Align the white dots and twist until you hear a click in place. If you have a dual gimbal adapter like we have here, you will need to use gimbal one, which is on my right side. Using gimbal two will not permit Skyport triggering. Now we can take the DLS2 cable and plug it into the JST connector on the right side of the Skyport. Be sure to keep this cable secured with zip ties or tape to prevent any loose cables that can interfere with the propellers. Now that we have the camera securely mounted and the DLS2 connected, we're ready to power on the drone and plan our first flight. Now that we are in the field, we will take our first calibration panel capture. The surface of the calibrated reflectance panel has been measured at numerous wavelengths using a spectrometer. Assuming the lighting was constant throughout the flight, taking panel captures just before and just after the flight allows the processing software to use the panel images as references to correct the reflectance values in the rest of the images from the flight. When we import the panel images into our processing software, the software is able to read the panel information from the image metadata and use this data to accurately measure reflectance at the time the capture was taken. It is important to take these captures before and after each flight, and also in the middle of a flight if you have to do a battery swap. After turning on the drone, the Altum and the DLS2 should automatically start up after a few seconds. Once you have a steady pattern of green lights, you're ready to get started. Place your calibrated panel on the ground with your back to the sun. Make sure no shadows are cast and no other light is reflected onto the gray calibrated surface. Hold the Altum about one meter above the middle of the panel and make sure no shadows from the drone are cast on the panel or the QR code. You can manually trigger a panel capture by pressing the trigger button on the Altum. Hold the drone steady and keep an eye on the DLS2. A blue flash will appear on the DLS2 and Altum status light when a capture has been triggered. In this example, we will use DJI Pilot with the Matrice 300. You can see our Altum with DJI Skyport is connected to the drone when the connected payload name appears in the lower left corner of the screen. For our mapping mission, we will use the Mission Flight option. After selecting Mission Flight, you will have an option to either create your own mapping area, select a previous mapping area, or import a mapping area with a KML file. 
It is easy to create a KML file in Google Earth or QGIS if you want a precise mapping mission without having to draw one with the touchscreen of the smart controller. To load the KML file, simply place it on the micro SD card and insert the card into your remote control. In this case, we will create a route to create a new mapping area. Select mapping, then we can get started. DJI Pilot will load a base map of your current location as long as you've cached the map area beforehand or are currently connected to a Wi-Fi network. You can easily choose your Wi-Fi network through the smart controller if needed. Let's tap the screen to create a mapping area. After tapping the screen to create a mapping area, you can pull out the menu to choose your custom camera. This is necessary so the drone knows how close together the flight lines will need to be to achieve the correct side overlap. Tap the camera type and select custom camera. In this case, we already have the Altum saved, but to create a new camera or edit the existing camera, you can tap where the screen says Altum. On this screen, you can edit or add a custom camera. Let's edit the Altum custom camera to see the camera parameters. When using the Altum, you will want to input these parameters. Let's go back to the main menu. Now you can see the ground sample distance, or GSD, for the Altum at the currently selected altitude of 100 meters. However, we can change these parameters to achieve a different GSD. We can also change the flight speed. You can use our flight calculator to determine a good flight speed for your mission. Finally, we will tap on the advanced settings option to finalize the details of our flight. We generally recommend using 75% to 80% side and front overlap, but you should check with our flight calculator to double check for your specific flight. In this case, we did not change the flight box that DJI Pilot created but you'll want to edit it to meet your needs. This specific location is a no-fly zone due to frequent seaplane landings on the lake, so we weren't able to take off as you can see indicated on the DJI Pilot interface. Finally, it's time for liftoff. Once you have confirmed with local authorities that it is okay to fly and you have scanned the sky for any obstacles, you can press the play button to take off. Make sure you have read the DJI documentation so you are clear on how to use the drone. After hitting play on the DJI smart controller, the drone will take off, and the Altum will capture often enough to achieve your desired overlap percentage. The remote control will make a camera shutter sound every time the Altum with DJI Skyport captures. After the drone lands, take another calibrated panel capture. Finally, safely power down the Altum before turning off the drone by holding down the trigger button for 4 seconds until all lights on the Altum and DLS2 have ceased flashing. After removing the Altum from the drone, safely stow the camera in the included storage case. Thanks for joining us for this video. If you have any questions, please refer to our knowledge base or send us a message. Stay tuned for more video tutorials. Bye for now.